Good evening, Pool Player Nation, and welcome to another edition of the Billiard Spotlight. I'm your host, Jason Bowman. You know, we're now in our sixth week of the COVID-19 shutdown, and as we all know, answers have been hard to come by, really, in every facet of our lives, I think, since this all began, including answers related to our favorite pastime, which is APA League and APA Tournament. So uh, tonight, we aim to change that. This evening, we're joined by APA President Greg Fletcher and Director of Tournament Productions, Bill Tufts, and we're going to be discussing APA's plans for our 2020 Las Vegas Championship events. Uh, These plans are based on what we know as of today, and these plans give us options as we move into the months ahead when we don't know as much. Uh, The plans that you're going to hear tonight, they give us our best chance to ensure all of our 2020 Las Vegas events ultimately get played and not canceled. Again, we're trying to make sure that all of our 2020 events are ultimately going to get played. Uh, It's also important to understand that APA is taking a proactive approach here that gives us flexibility, gives us options moving forward as we wait to really see how the pandemic is going to play out. So as we talk with you guys tonight about our plans for the rest of the year, please understand that ultimately the pandemic, as well as the decisions of local and state officials, is ultimately going to decide what happens with our events right moving forward. But it's also important for us to be prepared and to put ourselves in the best position to make sure our members who qualified for these events get to compete. Uh, So we've spent a significant amount of time talking with our network of league operators to make sure that we understand the challenges that they're facing in the local areas. And we think we've developed a plan that again, really gives us some very strong options moving forward. So with that said, gentlemen, welcome all eyes. I think all eyes of pool player nation are upon you. I hope you guys brought your a game and more importantly, I hope you guys brought us some good news. Uh, Greg, let's start with you, APA President Greg Fletcher. And uh, what can you tell us, Greg? Tell us what's happening. What are we talking about tonight? Well, you know, first, I'd just like to take a really just take a moment and, th- and thank everybody for tuning in. And also just for the the, the, the atmosphere and the camaraderie that you guys have been uh, pouring out online and, 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 and reaching out to us. And, you know, the, the APA community is, is, is vast and broad. And I just think that uh, we've all just really kind of drawn closer together through all this. And it's really been fantastic. I, I, I know I've spent a lot of time with our staff and uh, talking to league operators. And uh, we've also been talking with uh, the, our, our partners at the Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas. And we have some really great, I think some great news in spite of all the challenges that we're all going through every day. And uh, we're real excited that we're able to be able to kind of deliver some direction, some hope tonight, you know, to talk about uh, how we're going to, how we're going to put ourselves back together, how we're going to restart uh, this great uh, this great economy and, and how we're going to restart uh, playing pool and, and uh, getting back to what we usually do. Hey, Greg, so I know that leagues like leagues have now been shut down really across the board for six, six weeks. Are we six weeks? Yeah, it was, shut uh, down? we have we have no mid-March. leagues going on right now, right? Yeah, it was mid-March when we had to kind of everybody kind of had to shut down because of the virus. And uh, so it's been it's been uh, a few weeks. Yeah, and so I know tonight we, we mainly want to focus on the championship events. Know you guys have questions about when is Lee going to come back. We have the same questions. Unfortunately, we have fewer answers in that regard. Uh, I think most of those answers, Greg, are, are probably going to come from the league operators. And the league operators at this point are, are just kind of waiting and watching what their local government is doing, right? I mean, that, there's not a lot we can do, but that, I assume no. people that want to know about league are going to need to really talk to their league operator, right? Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, the, obviously, the we, we can't c- communicate personally with 250,000 people, uh, and our local league operators really are the best set up to be able to relay information and to and to talk with you about anything that you're that you're concerned about or or that you have questions about. And uh, as we move forward with with uh, kind of planning out the rest of the year, they will be the best person to talk to. Yeah, and so I, I also am kind of assuming that when leagues come back, is it is it safe to assume that they're going to start at different times and that things may be a little different here as they are there? And again, it's just going to be based on kind of what's happening in that area of the, of the country. Is that right? Yeah, it's really all over the place. And, and, and it even varies like by county. I know here in Missouri, outside St. Louis, uh, there were some reasons. Some uh, there was some news that uh, 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 a county west of St. Louis, uh, Franklin County, was talking about opening up here in the next day or so. So it's really going to be all over the place. And so uh, our local uh, our local league operators and 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 the, the associates there are going to be looking and working with those local authorities and trying to make the best decisions and the safest decisions for uh, starting league and and taking care of everything. 
Okay. So I, I think that that helps frame our conversation tonight. Again, we're going to be talking about the championship events primarily. We know that there is some carryover that goes into to league and playoffs and qualifiers. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit. But again, you guys need to be keeping your eye on what's going on in the news. Obviously, you guys are going to know when they're telling you that that bars are able to open back up and, and restaurants can open up. And of course, your league operators are going to be talking to you as well. So just be patient. And again, we're, we're all want to get back on a pool table as soon as possible. But uh, tonight we want to focus mainly on the championship event. So the other thing, Greg, that I want to ask about is, you know, I mean, obviously, like if these events, if we were talking about having these events like in a month, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion, right? Like safety is going to be a big thing when we decide yeah. ultimately whether what we hope happens happens. Am I correct? Yeah, well, I mean, the safety of our members is top priority. And you guys have heard that from a number of different sources, maybe other organizations that you belong to or near. Are, the safety of our members is absolutely the most important thing for us. And so, you know, we as we sit here and you think about, you know, the whole idea of social distancing and staying six foot or more away from everybody, that's really difficult to to, to contemplate. You know, if you've ever been to one of our national events where there's literally thousands of people walking around, uh, you know, the, the concept of, of doing that, it seems like what a challenge. But, you know, I think that's something that we're, we're, we're definitely going to be taking that into consideration. But it, it's it's one of those things where we have to provide leadership for our organization and we have to sit here and think, like, how can we move forward? Because the option of sitting still and doing nothing for the next year just doesn't sit right with any of us. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. But again, you know, the pandemic will decide, officials will decide, we will plan yep. and we will hope, but ultimately some of the decisions, you know, may yep. not come down to it. And if there is a decision for us to make, most certainly safety will be the number one uh, deciding factor there. So, so I, I just want people to understand that going forward. So there's not concern about like, well, what if, you know, uh, we're just planning to, to have options. I think we're going to, what we're talk about tonight is going to talk about flexibility options and really buying ourselves some time. So I'll, I'll, I don't know, Greg, you want to turn it over to Bill and let him talk a little bit about. Yeah. Just got. real quick, you know, Bill, Bill and, uh, and his staff and, uh, and a lot of the other staff uh, up at the APA have done an amazing job of coming up with some options for us. And, you know, we're real excited to be able to kind of unveil those. And uh, I just, I'm really proud of, of our staff and the hard work that they've uh, been doing, you know, for the last six weeks, we've been working really hard to try to 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 scope out what's going on. And, you know, uh, for the last, I'd say, two weeks, two and a half weeks, uh, we've really been trying to put together some good options for us. And I'm really happy uh, to let Bill kind of unveil that for everybody here. Sure, sure. Let's do it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to start by saying, you know, a lot of what we're talking about here has a direct impact on how your league's going to start back up. As a matter of fact, um, the leagues were the impetus for us to actually explore um, different avenues that we could run our tournaments in. Specifically, we, we are coming fast up on world qualifier season, right? In most areas, actually no areas are open right now. Uh, we do expect a slow rollout similar to how the shutdown started. So when they come back online, we don't really know exactly when that's gonna happen. What we do know is that the schedule for world qualifiers is already going to be impacted. The schedule for playoffs that lead into those is already impacted. The schedule of weeks of play that lead into those playoffs is already impacted. So we knew we had August on the books. Everybody's already aware we have the pool player championships have been postponed. We kept August on the books for a reason. We wanted to see how quickly was this thing going to happen? Were we going to be able to get back? Were we going to be able to get back to regular league life? Would that allow us to do the normal things we would do at the end of the spring session and feed into the the Whirlpool Championships. And, you know, over the last couple of weeks, it became really apparent that that just that just wasn't feasible. And we heard it from different leagues that uh, they were going to have significant problems trying to just do these things that we kind of, you know, took for granted all those years of having having places to play your world qualifiers, having the time to set all these things up. So what we wanted to do was buy them time. And the way we figured that we could buy them time was to see if there was a way of postponing the World Pool Championships. Okay. By postponing the World Pool Championships, that would allow us to let leagues restart, get back into that spring session, get back into those playoffs, the Tri Cups, if you've got them, the World Qualifiers. So that's where we started. We actually looked for a, a place and a time to postpone our Whirlpool Championships. Fortunately, we've got a great relationship with the Westgate Hotel. We reached out to them almost immediately. I think it was the day that we were shutting down the office to see uh, our national office um, when we all had to go home to see if there was a way 
a possible way for us to be able to postpone the World Bowl Championships. Fortunately, we were able to identify dates, the dates being late November. Uh, we're talking, I believe, the 28th of November, the Saturday, right after Thanksgiving through de December 6th. Okay. Obviously, we realize, you know, it, it's less than ideal, but it's better than the alternative. And the alternative is, what do you do about a, a World Bowl Championships if you've got nobody that can qualify for it? Right. Right. And so let me, I just want to re real quick recap, because what you're saying there is you're talking about before there can be a Vegas in August, there are a whole lot of things that have to happen. League play has to finish. You have to have usually like a division playoff. And then some areas you've got like a tri cup or a triannual. And then you've got the world qualifier. And then you got the teams that go to Vegas. So yeah. there are several layers and weeks of things that have to happen before teams can be ready to go anywhere. And that's, that's where we we're running out of time, right? Yeah, we're we're talking months of things that need to happen. Okay. Um, so there is no way to get back on track in a good way. I mean, you can't, if the economy opened up and everybody was able to go back in June, you can't start this process then. It's already too late. And that's really kind of the time frame that we're looking at. If you listen to most of the officials, most places, that's kind of what their target dates have been for when some of this stuff might, some life might return to normal. Okay. Um, so we needed to buy that time. So this buys this, if, I, if my math's right, because you said 11-28, November 28th, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. We knew that. It's obviously not ideal, but again, we're talking making lemonade out of lemons here, folks. So, uh, you know, it's not easy to reschedule big events like this. So um, seven months, does that give us about seven months to try to, to, to get leagues back, get the things rough, up and running, and then get to Vegas? So that gives us a lot of time. Yeah, it gives time. us seven months, and it also gives us till uh, roughly the end of September to try to get all of these things played out, whether that's the end of your spring session play, your playoffs, your your uh, world qualifiers. So that was really important. Uh, now, when we looked at the December dates, one thing we recognized immediately was that everything wasn't going to fit. Uh, the Westgate did have another group that had some space secured. Um, we've got to honor that, you know, they've got a space, they've got another group that's already contracted. So the event would have to be smaller, slightly smaller in scale. Um, so for anybody that's actually been out to the Westgate, that's been to one of our Whirlpool championships, you guys recognize the three major rooms that we've got. We've got the, the mini August mania. event. He's talking about the, the August, August event. Yes. You've got the mini mania room. You've got the showdown series room, which would be in the middle. You've got the main event room which is in the event center, okay? The only space that they actually had available were the, what would be the showdown series room or the pavilion for anybody familiar with the Westgate space and the event center. So once we realized there were some limitations, we knew we're not gonna be able to do everything that we would normally do, right? So we really had to focus on what is going to be our priority for that. Um, in APA, priority comes down to two huge events. You know, our priorities first are the eight ball world championships and the nine ball world championships. They have to be. They're the largest tournaments in the world for what they do. They're what the majority of our players play in. They are our bread and butter. So we knew already we had enough room for them. That was easy. Okay. Then it was what are the next events we need? Um, so anybody familiar with uh, the World Pool Championships knows that we run our masters, our ladies, our Jack and Jill, and our team captains event at this one as well so we knew we were gonna have to make some cuts um and looking at that it's it's tough to say you know which ones kind of take priority over the others but i think when you really look at it we got to look at the ones that are qualifying teams through division play yeah if through you, leagues there's leagues there's ladies leagues. leagues there's masters leagues there's not like a jack and jill league generally right there, there, there are a few there are a few yeah. um, so there's not there. like a team captain's league and there's not a team Okay. So I get what you're so, saying. Yeah. So when we were looking at the events, the two events we decided to make priorities for that December time frame were the okay. Masters and the Ladies because we have a very large chunk of our leagues that are running division play for those. All right. So that's a lot. Um, so the the four events that we've now identified for the Whirlpool Championships would be the eight ball World Championships. And I think we got a graphic we'll pull up here. I think we got a yes. graphic we're going to show you here in a second. Nine ball world championships, masters, ladies, and we're also going to do the wheelchair championships at that one as well. So we we can fit that one in. All right. So, so they should be they should be seeing a graphic now. Uh, again, you've got 
the two world championships, eight ball and nine ball. Those are the two big ones, the granddaddy and the, the big brother. Then you've got the masters and the ladies. And then you've got wheelchair, which typically takes place in April, which has already been postponed. Exactly. So we wanted right. to, yeah. So that's kind of brought us to our next phase. So wait, um, this is five events, December, yeah. late November, early December, end of this year. Eight ball open is the one that would start on Saturday, the 28th. I think that was the only one. The others would start uh, exactly. thereafter. So, yep. yep. So it'll, you know, some of the, some of the, you know, unfortunately the eight ball open folks, that's the biggest event. You're going to have to come to Vegas a little bit over Thanksgiving. We get it, but uh, let's all hope we're in Vegas on Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving weekend. Right. I'm, I'm praying to be there. I'm praying to be there. All right, so that's December. So now we got to talk about the other events from August, and we got to talk about some of the events from the pool player championships that have already been postponed. So with August, we wanted to try to see what can we fit into an August time frame that would make sense, right? That's next thing. We knew we had availability. We know August. I mean, realistically, if you're looking at the world, August is it's a little bit more of a long shot if everything's going to be back going by then. We wanted to buy ourselves some time, so we wanted to shrink down the length of time that we'd be out there too. Uh, typically, a Whirlpool Championship would be ten days in Las Vegas, beginning kind of that first week in in August, and then it would extend into that that full second week. We wanted to keep it this event to that second week, and we wanted to do that for a few reasons. One, we wanted to keep it short. We wanted to push it as far into August as possible, and then with that, we needed to keep we needed to have an event that would be what easier to qualify for because we don't know when leagues are going to come back up online right and we wanted these events to to be fast and require little staff and that's that's kind of more of a that's more of an apa thing and i think it, but i think it's important to to tell you guys you know we're operating you know we're we're all working right now but we're not bringing in any money there's no money coming in leagues aren't playing um we needed to have an event that was going to be affordable that would also send out less staff, right? So all of that mattered to us when we were planning this. Uh, so the events we came up with were obviously the team captains and the Jack and Jill were were two of the first we thought. Well, uh, they were already they were already happening there, right? They were already happening there. We had already scheduled them there, and they didn't fit in December. So okay, so were, those events stay right happen. where they were in August. They were Jack and Jill and and team captain. Not moving, they're staying in August, okay. Not staying there. And then we're like, well, we've got some time and we've got some tables. What about some of our other postponed events? What we what we identified was that we could fit the eight ball doubles and the nine ball doubles into that time frame as well. Okay, and the so these are about, events yeah. that would have been held in April mm -hmm. at the pool player championships, the eight ball and nine ball doubles moving from April to August. Yes. Okay, it's, yeah, and Steve's kind of showing that right now. You got that graphic? Cool. Um, so the eight ball doubles, nine ball doubles, why is that important? A lot of our teams have already qualified for that. Okay. And for the leagues that haven't had a qualifier yet, we figure that those aren't, those are easier qualifiers, um, to, to execute team captains and, uh, and, uh, Jack and Jill, they were already going to have to run qualifiers for those. So that made sense. Now, some people may say, why didn't we do the pool player championships at this one? We would not be able to do all four of those events as well as the pool player championships within that specified time frame with the specified rooms we want to use and with the staff that we want to use. So right. we've, got, we've got another postponed event. What are we going to do for those players? Right. Okay. So what we identified was that what, what our plan is, is to take those qualified players, those players that were qualified for our eight ball classic and our nine ball shootout. And those players will compete in next year's 2021 pool player championships. Okay. So from the, so eight ball classic nine ball shootout tournaments that were postponed through the pool player championships are moving basically to next year. Yes. So they will, they will play with new people from 2021. Yes, they will. Um, so the other thing that this is going to have an effect on is the amount of uh, local qualifier board participation we have this year right? Leagues aren't running. They're not doing boards. We have a real concern that we may not get the amount of qualifiers we need through this first window and probably maybe a portion of the second window too, to be able to host a full 2021 event if we just took those players that would qualify this year. 
So we figure if we add the, add the players that had already qualified this year to whoever we gain or that we already had qualified for this year's event, and we add in those that qualify through the local qualifier board program and the regionals this year to that, we can sustain it, and it'll be the largest pool player championships they'll ever have. All right, so I'm not even looking at the questions, Bill, but I know the question that's already been asked, I'm sure, maybe a dozen times is, then what about this year's prize money? Does that roll into next year? So is it going to be like double the prize money? Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, all the money. Okay. But but a lot of the times people want to say, well, will that double first place? And APA, our stance is always first place. It's great. It's awesome to to achieve that. But it's about paying down through. And if we've got more participants in next year's event, we want to pay out more of those people. So all that money will go to that event, but it'll be okay. distributed down through the bracket. Okay, well, that's great then. And then I also assume that anybody that would, would have qualified for this year, right, they get their hotel rooms, they get their, like, a travel assistance um, fund, they'll, they'll get that next year then when they, they go. Will. They will. And we got to work on our qualifying uh, criteria because they are required to stay active on teams and things like that. These people have already put in their time. They've already put in their sessions. They were ready to go this year. We're going right. to be... We're going to be aware of that whenever we come up with qualifying criteria. We'll get into that later on for those players, and we'll be reaching out to them to let them know how that will look. But I, I want to make it clear, pushing them to next year, it has a lot of benefits for those players too. When you're when you're talking about a singles event, eight ball, nine ball, if you're in those events and you're playing in those events, that's all you can do. You can't leave your match to go play in something else. If we tried to squeeze them all in in August, with these other events, these same players would not be eligible for the team captains championships. They would not be eligible for the doubles. They would not be eligible for any of those. By moving them forward, we get we allow them to continue to play for these other events that we're going to do in August. And I think that was important too. Well, and I'm guessing, I mean, I'm just looking at the calendar. August is three is three to four months. And I'm guessing the priority is after the world championships get moved, right? You said that's the priority. I'm guessing the next priority is is this eight ball classic and nine ball qualifiers. These people that have won this thing, um, and so pushing them to a year or a little bit less than a year, but but basically pushing them to next year gives us a really good chance to make sure they get to play right. Whereas what happens? We kind of did went, went from August to April, but what happens with these August events if? And again, we're we're hoping for the best, but if if they can't be played, and again, we don't need the kind of lead up time to get teams there, right, for an event like we do the, the other events, which is one of the reasons we're moving it. But if August has to be canceled, I assume then from what I'm sensing is that it just gets, it has to be canceled at that point for those four events. Is that right? Yeah, unfortunately, at this time, we have not identified uh, another solution or another time frame to be able to play those events. I know we got a lot of questions whenever we presented this to our league operator network. Can we just push the eight ball doubles, nine ball doubles players to next year. Um, that's not realistic. We can't add them to next year's schedule and then still take qualifiers from this coming league year. There yeah. isn't room for both. And and I, I really want to say this with a lot of care because I care about every player that's earned a right to be in Las Vegas. If we end up having to cancel that, it will be bad. It's There's no good way of spinning it. Um, we're going to do everything we can to try to identify solutions. And if we come up with something, we certainly will consider it. Um, but the reality of the situation is every one of these events could be canceled, you know, um, and, and it would be through no fault of our own. That's why we're doing this planning. We're doing this planning to be optimistic and to give us a chance to be able to host all of our events without losing a single one. Right. Um, COVID may have a different plan for that. And we may we may face that. Um, I'd rather not think about that right now. I want to think about the event and having the event. And right. even just by having the event in August, it buys us that time to have those discussions. And maybe another avenue opens up. You know, maybe there's something else that comes to life. But as of today, if August doesn't happen, then we'll have to figure out how these events happen on a local level and okay. what what happens there. Yeah, this situation is just changing daily, sometimes multiple times a day. I remember when when this thing first started to kind of become a reality at the end of February, uh, I mean, we were paying attention to the news. We were looking at things, we, you know, and I remember as the hours would progress, it would change and change and change, and that hasn't stopped. And so, and, and that, that kind of volatility 
lends itself to us actually maybe able to have a plan here, maybe able to execute something. So, you know, we're choosing to, if we're, if we're going to put some emphasis on something, it's going to be hope. And we're going to try to, we're going to try to make sure that if we can run it, we will, especially if we can make sure it's safe. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest key is it's got to be safe. And if you would have told me a month and a half ago that I'd be sitting on a live chat chat, telling our, our pool players, out there that we're having to reschedule events. I'm supposed to be in Vegas right now setting up for the pool player championships. It's what I do. It's what I love. I couldn't have predicted that six weeks ago. And certainly I don't know what's going to happen six weeks from now. So our, we just feel let's give ourselves a chance here. Let's give our pool players a chance and then let's, let's hope for the best. That's really all we can do. Yeah. I like that though, because I don't know if you guys realize this, but, um, like if you look at the billiard calendar, not just APA, but kind of across the board, most events and things for the year have now been been really canceled. So if we could pull this off, if we could somehow, you know, be able to have, you know, at least if we can have all these events, awesome, right? If we can get this August event in, great. I'm guessing you you guys realize it's it's real iffy, right? I mean, there's a real chance that doesn't happen. Um, but you know, we've bought a ton of time for December, which is great. And then even more time for, for next spring for the people that already made it. I want to clarify too. So the people that qualify for 2020 are qualified for the eight ball classic and nine ball shootout. They moved to 2021. They're actually going to compete at the same time with new people from that qualify in 2021 for in the eight ball classic tournament, the nine ball shootout. And then also there will still then be the normal, showdown series events which would be both doubles and the wheelchair they will return yes. next april yes that okay, will so we'll go back to normal next april that is the plan that is the okay. plan. well and you think about it next spring you know when when we when we when we do that it's going to be the largest pool player championship we've ever had it'll be a super ppc for for all practical purposes yeah that and, would... and again like bill said that the, the payout will actually double it's not going to double at the top so if you're in the eight ball classic it's like fifteen thousand. I think nine ball, it's 10,000 for first. That'll stay the same. But what you're saying is that money gets dispersed throughout the field. Uh, so like if I'm in a certain place, I, I, I get money that I might not have gotten yeah, or I might I get a little be, bit more. I want to be clear about the money doubling. The money would double if our participation doubled because all the money that's in the prize prize money field comes from the local qualifier board. So the oh, added right. money actually would come from the addition of the players that have competed this year into the event, whatever proportion that would be. Okay. Excellent. So, um, okay. So then just to recap, December WPC, which is in August, right? Getting moved to December. That will now be the world pool championships. The world pool yes, championships sir. will happen late November, early December. will include eight ball and nine ball world championships. will include the master's championship and will include the ladies championship and, and the wheelchair. There be a wheelchair. Mini Mania. And, and, and What's up with Mini Mania? We didn't even talk about Mini Mania. Yeah. Talk about minis. We are planning on having minis at both of these events. Now, All right. It may not be the thousand minis that uh, you guys are typical typically used to, but there will be enough to compete in. We will make sure that we have minis involved as well. So every one of these events will have Mini Mania. Yes, sir. That's great. That's great. Because I, you know, I mean, a lot of people come out there just to play Mini Mania. And I'm guessing if nobody else has a pool tournament this year, there's going to be more people that want to come out there and play Mini Mania. So I would think so. I get in line think. early if we can, if we, if we end up being able to have and, it. Let's and hope. Jason, just to say, you know, I mean, the Westgate said that they don't have uh, that other ballroom in December. If that changes, you can bet we're jumping all over that too and going to try to, going to try to do what we can with that space to increase the Mini Mania as well. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. We need some things to go our way. We need some things. All right, so then, so then, so that's the December event. We talked about December events. Got five events. August, which is staying on the calendar, is going to have two events that were already scheduled for August: the Team Captain Championship, the Jack and Jill Championship, and then they're picking up both of the uh, doubles championships from April that were yes. postponed. And then people from April, eight ball classic, nine ball shootout, they're going all the way to next April. Which I get it. You know, like if I if I was ready to go to Vegas, we were ready to go to Vegas too. It's hard to look at it and be like, now I got to wait a year, but at least the likelihood now that you know you're going to get to play and not be an event that's canceled is so much better. And you still get everything that, that you had coming to you. So, you know, you just got to be patient, which is, you know, well, we all got to be patient right now. I don't think there's any way around that. So, and then again, that, that event next year, that pool player championships will go back to normal. So 
You'll have the 2001 qualifiers in both those events. Both of the eight ball and nine ball doubles will return as well as the wheelchair. And then we'll have mini mania. So hopefully by then everything is just back to normal and life is good. And uh, we'll have a bunch of trips to Vegas in, in like a short amount of time. That'd be <laughs> kind of cool. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, but safety, right? I mean, again, we're not going to go out there. If, if, you know, Greg would be out there, Bill would be out there. I would be out there. Um, you know, we're not going to put our members, we're not going to put our staff, we're not going to put ourselves in a bad situation. So again, I know there's probably people out there that are saying, how could you be talking about this right now? And it's because if we don't plan right now, then we can't have later if things go our way. So we have yeah. to plan for now, for what we know yeah, right I mean, now. Yeah. If, I mean, if we wait, I mean, because there's a lot of waiting right now, if we wait and we've, and the smoke finally clears, let's say, August or, or, or I should say I'm thinking about for W for WPC. If we wait, then we can't plan an event. We can't make arrangements for the hotel. So we have to get out in front of this thing now and hope for the best. Yeah, I'm surprised that we were able to find time at the hotel like later in the year. I mean, usually you can't take a big event and insert it into a place that short a time. Well, so that's that's pretty remarkable. Guys, to give everybody a little uh, little insight, that space was not available to us initially. When we first reached out to the Westgate, that space was not available to us. Another group dropped out. They had another group that was jumping on it. That's how fast this stuff can change. And you can miss a window to give yourself a chance. And that's all we're trying to do is give ourselves a chance. If the world's ready uh, for a pool tournament, we want to be ready to run it. I like that. I like that. Uh, you guys want to look at some questions? My my uh, messages have been blowing up here. I think we got some questions. You guys good to take a few questions? Yeah. From the uh, from the world. Let's see. I probably got a bunch. I don't have that many really. Um, okay. So somebody's asking about sessions. How does this impact the remaining sessions? Spring session in my league area. I, you know, again, this is going to be different by what's happening in your league area, right? Depending on when your league area can come back. It's going to be different everywhere. So it's probably going to be handled differently everywhere. I mean, the ideal scenario is that your spring session, because we have bought seven months now before the world championships, um, buys us a lot of time. So ideally, your spring session would be able to be finished, even if it was being finished in, say, late summer. Um, you know, it could potentially be finished, and then you'd still have enough time for division playoffs and then, you know, world qualifiers and the things that have to happen that Bill mentioned that were problematic right now based on the calendar. So um, I think that answers that question. I mean, your league, your, your league operator is going to be able to tell you much better than the three of us when league may come back for you. But, but again, they're going to try to finish things out as, as best they can. But in some areas, you know, that may not be possible and they may have to be creative in, in what they do too. So just understand um, flexibility is important. Options are important. And, and we all need to remember that as we move forward. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a, I think it's important to uh, note that your league operators are working with the consultants they are working with the national office. We're trying to figure this out because we do know it's going to be different for everybody. We know, as Greg said, county to county, city to city, state to state, how we come back online is going to be different. So we'll be in close contact with them. It'll vary some, but Jason did point out the, uh, the idea would be to finish out the spring. Yeah, I had a I had a, a a video call with several league operators today, and uh, they were all at different places with where their spring sessions was when they had to close down. Uh, oh, yeah. There were some there were some that were only had a couple of weeks left, and there were some that had six weeks left. So yeah. you know they're going to have to be very creative. And so we've made a you know we've made a commitment to to be as flexible as we can and to help them to uh, to to do the best that they can with their individual league areas because the 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 laws and the officials are going to make different changes over over social distancing and how many people can be in a location and and so we recognize that there's just no cookie cutter way to handle this so but we're we're going to apply our our creative juices to this and we're going to come up with some win-win situations excellent so a uh, question about handicaps what about handicaps with waiting another whole year how will that impact so i qualified now uh i mean i guess if i if talk i improve if i get better i guess i'd play at my new handicap next year right talking about a singles well we do have the certification process so if you've got a pool table at home and you've been banging around during the entire uh shutdown um yeah. <laughs> and you feel like you've at least maintained your skill level or gotten better you need to let us know that's why that yeah. process is in place lucky you but if we're if we're talking about those players that qualify for singles and going back, there will be a requirement to come back and play and show us where you're at. 
before we get to that. It's just not going to be what we've had in the past, which is you got to stay active for every single session because we understand these players have already stayed active for the sessions that were initially required. We'll just have them come back um, at a specified time and get their plays in so that we know where they're at. Okay. So the one thing that we didn't talk about, but we probably should, is what about the APA Junior Championships? Those are scheduled for mm -hmm. July here in St. Louis, what's going on with the junior championships? So the junior championships are looking pretty iffy right now. I mean, um, yeah, I bet. I mean, I mean, you're talking early July. Um, I don't know what St. Louis is going to look like uh, early July. Um, I do know that we're talking with our league operators uh, about their junior leagues and about the willingness to travel. We have heard from a few that are, have already said that they won't be sending. Um, I imagine that that's going to go one of two ways over the next couple of weeks. Either we're going to hear more saying that they won't be sending or we're going to hear more being optimistic that, yes, I am. And that's going to ultimately make the decision on that event. But if I if I had to call it today, I'd say it's a it's a real long shot. I know. Yeah, as a, I mean, that's as a, a tough situation. A, yeah. yeah. As a father of four kids, I know I would be pretty nervous about putting my kids in that situation. But I tell you what, man, we love our juniors. You know, and uh, we we really want to run it, but we've got to do the right thing here. You know, the, the biggest bummer, too, is that these kids have had everything taken away from them this year, from, from schools, graduations, to proms, yeah. and, and you hate to be another in a list of things that they weren't able to do this year, but we got to do what's safe. You know, we don't yeah. want to put anybody and especially children in, a, in an environment that isn't safe. So that's going to be our guiding principle in this. So juniors, as of this moment, is not canceled, but it does not look good. And we will, as soon as we know for sure, we will let you guys know. But, you know, if we, we can always hold out a little hope. But, again, I, you know, St. Louis is still under stay-at-home orders till like, mid-May at least. And so, I, you know, I don't know that we'll, we'll be in a position to be able to, to, to actually do it. So we'll let you guys know. Stay tuned to our Facebook page, poolplayers.com. We'll have that information as soon as, as soon as we can pass it along to you. And then what about the U.S. Amateur Championship? Let's talk about that one because that one's a little further off. But, obviously, it's on the calendar, and it's important especially for the higher skilled players, a lot of which I'm probably are tuning in. Yeah. Well, uh, the USAM being an event in November with its qualifiers ran in September. I think the preliminaries is something we've got to look at uh, because that could be part of the world qualifier season. We wouldn't want players to have to choose whether or not to try to qualify for the uh, World Pole Championships or go to the USAM prelim. That's something that me and my team will look at. But right now, I mean, if we're planning an event for August and we're planning one for December, we're not going to cancel one that's in November. So right now the USAM is on. Uh, I know we're still getting some entries for it, and we're really hopeful that, that one will uh, be executed too. Who doesn't love Tampa in uh, November? That's right. I love Tampa in November. I love Tampa right now, to be honest with you. But <laughs> um, so, question about for those for those that don't shoot summer session, can we still shoot in August? That'll be so. I'm guessing that's for summer session uh, requirements. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff's going to be based on local play, and we're going to have to work with your league operators. What I can tell you is that we're preaching flexibility, 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 because we realize this thing's been hard for us. We know what it's been for you guys, and we want to try to make this as smooth as possible uh, and get people get people back to doing what they love without without too many hurdles for that. We don't want to inhibit anything. So I uh, can't speak to your your exact situation, but we will be in touch with your league operator. Guarantee that. Excellent. Um, so do, are the dates for the August event, or does that, do those remain basically what they were before? Or is that, is, were some of those events portion. move around? So we're looking at a portion. Uh, okay. it'd, be, it'd be the latter half of the event. So I think the start would be like the 11th and we'd run through like the end of the week. We're talking like a five, six day event. And without the dates in front of me, I don't want to, okay. I don't want to pump them out there, but I believe it was around August 11th. And I remember that because that's my brother's birthday. So. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put those at because you I know you're still playing with like certain things at certain times in the match schedules. So as soon as we have the dates of of all the things, we'll get that stuff pushed out to you guys too. So don't worry, we you, you know the time frame for now that we're looking at. The most important being some of these bigger events are moving to December. I think that's the big one, and then obviously the people that have been postponed were were wondering what was going to happen with their events. So yeah, we want to be real careful of going through full date ranges because as we go through the schedule, we, we start off with bare bones, right? Of what a tournament should look like and what you need as far as pool tables and, and people and times and all that. But there are other considerations that go into it too, regarding registration times, 
finals times, things like that. We're still working that out. And they could have an impact one way or the other at, uh, and at a day here or a day taken away. And until we have that set, we don't want to like pump that out for anybody. But it'll be I, right now. It's at the start would be August eleventh. Okay, um, folks that had already purchased airfare for the pool player championships. I think we're getting a lot of comments about that. Um, I think we were looking at that, but I, I think Jody put out some information maybe on our website, poolplayers.com, under the pool player championships. I know Southwest has has given out a very gracious change policy. I think most of the other airlines have as well. I only fly. Southwest for the most part. So I don't, I don't know exactly, but uh, I think we've been trying to facilitate that information. The best thing you could do though, is get a hold of your airline and say, yeah. I, my, my trip was canceled because of COVID-19. What options do I have for rebooking? And we'll get those, we'll get those new dates out as soon as we have them for next year. Um, you know, so you can start planning accordingly, but most of your airlines, I would think if you go to your, their website, they're going to have information about you know, how flights have been affected uh, and that kind of thing. So that's the yeah. ultimate source there. We'll try to facilitate information. Yeah. But your ultimate source is going to be your, your airline that you're booked with. Yeah. My, my daughter was uh, supposed to get married uh, this past week and her wedding oh. got canceled because of this. And so uh, we had, uh, we had uh, purchased some airline tickets for several people that were going to come in and celebrate with us. And uh, I was able to successfully call American airlines and, uh, and get those refunded. And so, uh, yes, uh, either go to their website or call them direct. They were very gracious and they just, they didn't even ask many questions. They just took care of it. Yeah. You would hope right now. I mean, but I think sometimes it takes picking up the phone, yep. you know, to get to the right place and, and saying the right thing. So make sure you reference that your trip was canceled because of the, the pandemic. And I think you probably, yep. um, you know, they'll try to work with you as best they can. Uh, somebody's asking if the fall regionals will still happen. I guess that's kind of iffy, right? Fall regionals are iffy. Um, I don't want to completely rule them out. We may have some areas that already ran enough boards um, that would e either have the uh, the ability to run them this year or have the need to run them. Some of these get fairly large. It may still make sense to break them out into two windows. But I would say based on the board counts that we got in before the shutdown and, and kind of what we're projecting when and if we get back, it may be tough for a lot of markets to hold a fall regional just because you need a certain amount of participants uh, at those to to gain a slot. If that were to be the case, those players that had um, played on the local qualifier board in this window would be pushed to next spring. Okay. Uh, look at the questions. Can you qualify so, so for the real quick? Go ahead. You don't you don't lose your qualification. We just literally say, okay, since we can't hold one in the fall, we'll hold one in the spring. We already do this in some markets. Hmm. Uh, based on participation, this might just be a bit more widespread this time around. Okay. Can you qualify for the 2001 pool player championships, meaning eight ball classic or nine ball shootout, if if you've already qualified for the 2020 event? I assume you can if it's the opposite uh, format. Uh, if it would be the opposite format, yeah. But if you were already in that format, no, because you'd be on the brackets twice. We don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So you could you could try to qualify if you're qualified for eight ball classic. You try to make the nine ball shootout next year and play them both. So that's what you're saying you can do. But but otherwise, yeah. Now anybody that finds themselves in that in that circumstance will work with you. Just contact uh, the tournament department. Uh, yeah. We'll uh, we'll sort that through. We've got a little bit of time to work through those. Uh, that's one that I haven't specifically spoken with Amber about, but it is a great question. And we hey, well, this is this is the first time we've ever had this scenario, man. Yep. yep. I don't know if I understand that question. I mean, what would be the benefit? Why would I want to try to qualify for the, just to be on the bracket twice? What would be well, the benefit were, of me doing it twice? No, the benefit might be, or it might, I don't know, there might be a benefit if we allowed it. There wouldn't be a benefit, but somebody that already played on a board that had already qualified for the fall regionals in the nine ball shootout, who was also qualified for the nine ball shootout at this year's PPC, yeah. There's no need for them to play now. Yeah. That that board essentially um, yeah, no. would matter, so they would need a, a refund or, or some sort of uh, uh, yeah something back for that. Okay, we'll so take... we kind of we kind of touched on this. It sounds like we're getting a lot of questions in a lot of ways, but basically, it's why why wouldn't you do the eight ball classic and nine ball shootout in the fall instead of teams? People already qualified for them have flight vouchers uh, and that kind of thing. But I think I think you kind of touched on this. If I understood it right, it was almost this was the one plan that allows everything to be moved and nothing to be canceled. Is that right? That is right. So this is the only plan that allows everything to still be able to happen. And I think the other reality that we're looking at is there is a strong possibility, at least stronger than 
the other two events, the one in December and the one in April, that the August event may very well be canceled ultimately, right? I mean, there, that, it's a stronger possibility that that one would be canceled in December because we just have more more time. So again, I think I think you kind of said this, but the hierarchy is to qualify to make sure the world championships get played, eight ball and nine ball. Then the second hierarchy or importance seems like the the eight ball classic and nine ball shootout need to get played, and so you'd rather buy more time there to make sure because eventually like a lot of these tournaments can't just be stacked on to the next year. That's like the only tournament that can be made up later. Right. Yeah. And I, and I realize, and, and sometimes that's a tough thing for the showdown series participants to hear in because that's the league they're playing in. That's the divisions they're playing in. Right. But what we have to remember about those showdown series events, the, the masters ladies, eight ball doubles, nine ball doubles, Jack and Jill, all of these events. Yeah. They are comprised of division play and people that played all year to do it, they're also comprised of areas that just do tournament teams. Now, there are benefits to playing in division. You build up prize funds, things like that, that maybe a tournament team doesn't get. But that not every team had to go through all of the hoops to get that qualification, right? But for the world championships, eight ball and nine ball, and for the eight ball classic and nine ball shootout, these players had to, they had to work their butts off to get to these events. Those are the marquee events. Those are what these two major events on the calendar are built around are those four staple events. So if we've got to choose in an imperfect world, those are the ones that we have to choose. Yeah. So, so your answer, if you were qualified for April and you're wondering why you're not going to play in August, we want to make sure you get to play, which means we got to push you to, to next year. That's the best chance to make sure you get what you earned um, because, you know, otherwise there's, there's no way for it to fit. So um, you know, we're basically again making lemonade out of lemons. And again, boys, right? I want to say the nature of singles. <laughs> the nature of singles makes it to where if you put it over the top of something, if you put it over the top of those events in August, there will be events that they'd be excluded from playing in. Those players that qualify for the eight ball classic nine ball shootout. It's even worse if we're talking about the the team championships and and how they would be able to compete on their teams while also trying to play a single. So you can't marry those well. You right. need those to be to be pushed forward because that schedule that we had already had developed and unfortunately we had to postpone the one for this year's pool player championships allows those players that qualify for the eight ball class and nine ball shootout the best opportunity to still be able to compete in everything else that we do. Yeah, and we want to make sure that our players have the best time possible. I mean, we run the best events uh, in the world, and we really want to make sure that the experience that they have is world class. Yeah, and if you're in that singles event, you're playing back to back to back. If you're winning in that singles event and, and we had a team event scheduled at the same time, you may never see your team. <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. And then let's talk about uh, the purple tier and the black tier. You got the best players we've got in APA and they're qualified and they can never go play with their teams that they're captaining and that they're the best player on because they keep winning in the tournament. So they've yep. got to be over in this room doing this thing. They can't be over in this room doing this thing. So all these things have to go into it. And we we try to think through all of those scenarios for you guys and, and try to build the best experience that we can. And, and this tournament lineup is the one that does that. So I want to make sure, because we got a question about this, and I'm not sure if we've stated it as plainly, but if the events in August, which again are eight ball and nine ball doubles, Jack and Jill doubles, and team captain, if the August event ultimately is can't be played it would then be canceled not postponed it would be canceled and you can't just take those teams and like stack them on to 2021 correct that just doesn't work no, with the no. so it would be canceled. We've got, yeah we've got we've got contracts with the hotel for next year's event too uh and what we're able to do with next year's event as well as our tournament calendar you can't just extend that april event and and try to try to fit these people in now i don't want to completely close the door that there isn't another solution out there should this one be canceled okay. but if you ask me today there isn't a plan okay. whether one develops that's a different story and i always leave that hope you know well, but, you guys have made some magic yeah. happen here so we'll, we'll yeah. give you the benefit of the doubt i like what i'm i like what i'm hearing <laughs> you know i mean you, you, you've made some magical things happen so hey i, I i'm not gonna i'm gonna have faith in you so I never close the door yeah i like to stay optimistic that all these things that we've worked this hard to plan are going to happen and then if and when we realize that they can't let's let's pivot and figure out what the best solution is yep. from there. so let me let me that's a good that's a good transition and so what happens then if 
if some of these events are canceled, let's say I'm qualified for, you know, one of the doubles events that's been postponed. Uh, August has to be canceled because the pandemic is, is still in a situation where they're not gonna let that many people come together. What, what happens? Like, do I, what do I get? I, do I still get my something like, is, does my league operator decide? I mean, what's the situation that happens there? I think we're going to, I think we're going to work on it. I think, uh, people's minds immediately go to just take the travel assistance or the payout that you were going to get to go to the event and just pay it out. I think that's a worthy thing to think about, but there may be other solutions out there. So I don't want to say that that one's the best and it may not work. Okay. In every scenario, you know, one league might have a it would might have a lot of money in the coffers for that particular event and sending people out and giving them rooms or whatever else. Maybe that payout would would make a difference. Other leagues may just hold a tournament and they basically pay for flights. Maybe those flights have already been paid for, you know. And so okay. we've got to really look at at those individual circumstances. Should that happen, and then and then make a determination, maybe based on league. Um, but we're gonna probably try to find something that would work for for everybody across the board first we like consistency all right so i but i mean i, I guess what i'm what i'm trying to ask is maybe i didn't ask it so well or maybe i would just focused on the august event but overall like if my team if, if if vegas doesn't happen even in december right is is i assume there's some kind of prize at the end for teams like if, if vegas does if we were playing for vegas there'd probably be something else right yeah. we just don't yeah. know exactly what that might be that don't. would probably be based on league area, but there'd be something, right? We don't. And again, it comes back down to uh, do you look at what maybe what the payout would have been for the travel assistance, and maybe that just gets paid out and distributed to the teams at that point. Okay. I mean, the money, trust me, the money doesn't just go away. It goes right. to those players. That I, think that's, I think that's probably and, what people want to hear. I yeah. think that's what people are asking is, and one if Vegas doesn't another, happen, then what, right? No, like, those players' funds are players' funds. They will, okay. they will get distributed. It's how they're distributed. And through what method? That's the part we'd have to figure out again. If and when the, we have to cancel the tournament, but I don't want to cross that road until yeah. we're actually in that spot. Because right. right now, those players should be coming out and hopefully playing in an awesome event. Yeah. So we're we're planning for the best. I, I know though, just because I've listened to some of the league operators, and our league operators have been so awesome through this. So many of them like doing their own live streams, communicating with their members. I, I think they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, and, and let's just remember, these guys are out of work too right now. So stressful time for them, but they're doing a really good job communicating. And I'm sure they are planning for these types of contingencies that, you know, if if for some reason December rolls around and we can't do Vegas, what do I do for my league members? I'm sure they're all having these thoughts and they are planning because again, it's going to range. What happens here is different than what happens there, but I'm sure they are preparing for that. And uh, those are conversations we continue to have our support staff making yeah. sure they, they they know the parameters for doing that and that kind of thing. Well, so you know, we've got, safe, right? We've got we've got decisions to make on our side too. You know, I mean we are prepared to pay out teams. So we do have prize money and we've got to figure out how how we deal with that too. Cause again, we're not looking to keep that money, you know, but we got to figure out the way that it would, you know best be distributed or, or how we could use it and how we do that stuff. I mean, I don't want to get into all that. Just know that we will come up with what's fair for what people have played for. So I don't worry. Like there's nothing to, yeah. to don't, you shouldn't have, there's enough to be anxious about people in the world right now. Don't worry about the league. It's going to, it will be there and it will be straightened out. You don't have to worry about that part. If we've, if we've shown you anything with this new plan, it should be that there will be a plan, right? Yeah. If this plan doesn't work, there'll be another plan. All right. I think so it's, don't worry. I think, yeah. I think it's just safe to say we we have to surf the wave as it goes, right. and and we'll and we're going to make the decisions the best decisions possible at that time, and so you know we're we're very much committed to fulfilling our promises to our members, and you know we're very grateful for all of them and for for how they have been so faithful and and and, and positive during this time, and so we're we're going to do our very best to honor that. Absolutely, awesome. Well, that's a pretty big uh, debut for your guys' first uh, appearance on the Billiards Spotlight. I mean, I'm I'm pretty wild. Like, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> go, go, go big or go home, right? That's a lot of stuff, man. It might be all-time high viewership. So, well, I appreciate all the information. I think it's been helpful. I'm excited. Hopefully, the members are excited. I know it might take a little while to digest the information that we've given you. The good thing is this video will be out there if you want to go back and watch it. We'll also be pushing information out on our website, poolplayers.com. And then we'll take that information and push it out on Facebook so you guys can can digest it that way if you need to. I know we've used some different graphics to show where everything's going, and, and it'll make sense. There's plenty of time. 
we've bought ourselves some time, we've bought ourselves some options, and now we just got to sit back and hope that uh, the things with this this COVID work out. That's what we need next, right? Yep. That's the next domino we need to fall, and hopefully we're moving that direction. So, folks, thank you for tuning in tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, we hope you guys stay safe, stay well, and we will look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for tuning in.